Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about specific heat. It's... Welcome back. So let me give you a definition of specific heat, which is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So yes, this means it is a numerical value that we can measure uh, and we can quantify. But here's another way to look at specific heat. It is the amount of energy a substance can absorb before its own temperature changes. Which means if you have a substance with a low specific heat, then all of the energy that's going to go into it will flow out of it just as easily. Meaning it will actually increase its temperature very quickly and then cool off just as quickly. And remember, we're trying to look at energy from the standpoint of energy flow. So if you have a substance with a low specific heat, then energy is going to flow through it quite easily. However, if you have a substance with a high specific heat, well, then it's going to absorb a lot of that energy before its own temperature even changes meaning it's going to heat up slowly, but then once it's uh, very hot, it's going to take a long time for it to finally cool off. Meaning that when it comes to energy flow, a high specific heat substance is actually quite resistant to energy flowing through it because it comes in and it gets absorbed and then it just kind of hangs out for a while before it finally gets released on outside. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. So if we look at a specific heat chart like this, you can clearly see that water is right up top. It has the, the high specific heat of everything listed on this, this chart. And so um, it actually will absorb the most amount of energy per gram. Whereas all of your metals are right down there at the bottom, like lead and copper, um, and this should actually make a lot of sense that metals actually heat up very quickly and then cool off just as quickly, which is why metals tend to be used for all of your kitchenware, your pots and pans, because you want the energy to flow into it and then out of it just as easily so it can cook your food. Okay, so now that we understand the basic concepts of specific heat, it's time for me to show you how to use it in a calculation. So grab your calculator and join me on the inside of the computer. Let's go. Okay, so here is our equation. It is Q equals MC delta T. Now let me show you what everything stands for here. Q stands for energy measured in joules or calories. Now I want to point out that this equation requires joules or calories. So if the question gives you kilojoules or kilocalories, then just multiply by a thousand and you're good to go. All right, M here stands for mass measured in grams. So once again, if the question gives you kilograms, just multiply by a thousand. C here, C stands for specific heat. And specific heat has some strange units, or strange looking units, I should say. They are joules per gram degree Celsius, or calories per gram degrees Celsius. Obviously, depending on whether or not energy is joules or calories. So yeah, I know they look a little weird, but just go with me on it. That's exactly what they are. Okay, and then last but not least, we've got delta T, which is change in temperature measured in degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's what everything means. Let's see how to use them. All right, so here we go. 52.7 grams of water was heated to 75.0 degrees Celsius. How much energy in joules did the water absorb? All right, so our equation is Q equals MC delta T. All right, do we know Q? Well, Q is energy, and that's what it's asking for, so no, we don't know that. So we got Q equals M is mass, which is 
Uh, the specific heat of water, and this is something I forgot to mention. Um, you guys should actually know this. Um, you just kind of need to memorize this one. The specific heat of water, so specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius, or it is one calorie per gram degrees Celsius, okay? So anytime the question doesn't give you specific heat, um, but if it's talking about water, well, it doesn't need to give you specific heat because there it is, okay? So water is, so we're dealing with joules here, so the specific heat of water is 4.18, and then the uh, change in temperature is right there, 75.0 degrees Celsius. All right, so all you got to do is take your calculator, multiply straight across, and what you get is 16,521.45. But if you look back at all of the original numbers here, they all have three significant figures. So we're going to count one, two, three, stop at the five. The next number is a two, which means we round down. So we're going to round this to 16,000. 500, and then this being energy, the units are joules. Okay, All right, let's look at the next, this next one here. The initial temperature of concrete is 18.0 degrees Celsius. What is the mass if the concrete absorbed 5,738 joules when its temperature reached 68.0 degrees Celsius. And then it tells us that the specific heat of concrete is 0.84 joules per gram degrees Celsius. All right, so once again, our equation is Q equals MC delta T. All right, and now we need to plug everything in. All right, do we know Q? Well, here it is, it's 5,738. Uh, 5, All right, so we're gonna write that down equals mass. Uh, we actually don't know that this time around, so that's what we're looking for. Specific heat is 0.84, and then delta T is change in temperature. Well, this time we are given an initial temperature and a final temperature, so we're just going to subtract the two, 68.0 minus 18.0, and of course that is 50. Okay, so here we are now. Our variable that we're looking for is here in the middle. Okay, so let's do what we can. Let's multiply these two numbers together first, and we get 5738 equals m times 42. And now, in order to get m by itself, right, we're going to divide both sides by 42. And we get that m equals 136. 0.619 blah 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 but when we look back at our original numbers um, so 18.0 has three sig figs 5738 has four sig figs this has three sig figs this one here has two sig figs so our final answer can only have two so we got one two the next number is a six so we're going to round up so that becomes 140 the uh, this is mass so the units are grams. Okay, so those are two examples of how to do this. So let me scroll down here. Come on. And here are two more examples for you to try out. Okay, so here pause real quick and then we'll give you a chance to work them out and then we'll check our answers. All right, so pause here in one, two, three, pause. All right, so here are the answers, and check them out, see how well you did. If you have any questions about anything, please comment below, uh, and I would love to answer any questions you have. Uh, all right, that's it for me today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. All right, thank you guys. Remember, I am not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Now I'm ready.